Hello, my name is Amy Reuter, and I am the campus dietitian at Northwest University. You're listening to the 10 Minute Tips podcast. Today, we're talking about eating strategies for all day energy. In the next few minutes, we will explore ways to create an eating plan to maintain a high energy level throughout the day by focusing on timing of meals and snacks, food choices, and amounts. Let's start with the morning fuel, breakfast. Just as the name implies, it's important to break that fast, that overnight fast that we've had, and recharge. Recharge the brain, recharge the muscles. We do this by including our energy sources, protein, carbohydrates, and healthy fats. And all three of them we want to include in our breakfast meal or morning fuel. We also want to look at some specific nutrients, and I wanted to highlight six that can be important throughout your week to get at breakfast and and also throughout the day. The first is calcium. While you might be aware that calcium strengthens bones and teeth, it's also important to have calcium to help in our muscle contraction and maintain a normal heart rhythm. So to boost intake, you may want to include some milk, yogurt, or their dairy foods, or almonds, or leafy greens. Iron is the next nutrient. Iron is essential for oxygen transport throughout the body. It's found and very well absorbed from our animal sources, lean meats, chicken, turkey, eggs, but we can also obtain iron from plant sources, dried fruit, beans, and leafy greens. If we do wanna get our iron to help up, help again with the oxygen transport throughout the body, we wanna get that from plant sources. We wanna include some vitamin C rich foods along with our plant sources. And vitamin C is our next nutrient. Vitamin C is an antioxidant that helps form collagen, but it also helps in wound healing. And in terms of energy, it's helping us, our bodies to be resistant to infection. To boost intake, you can include citrus fruit, also strawberries are high in vitamin C, as are peppers and potatoes. The next is potassium. Just as with calcium, potassium has a role in normal muscle contractions and helps with transmitting nerve impulses and fluid balance. Now there are a variety of vegetables and fruits that are high in potassium. You also find that it's high in yogurt and also coconut water. The next nutrient is fiber. Fiber, while it does keep us regular, it it also contributes to that feeling of fullness or satiety. And so to boost intake at breakfast, we can include whole fruits, we can include whole vegetables if we'd like, and also whole grains. The final sixth sixth nutrient I want to highlight is choline. Choline helps support the brain's messenger service and it's linked to new memory cell production. So this is a good one if you're going into a class where you need to retain a lot of information. To boost intake of choline at breakfast, include egg yolks, peanuts, soybeans, and flaxseed. Now, many of us probably are aware that breakfast is good for us, and we may even really like a lot of the number of traditional breakfast foods, but we find that time is short in the morning. So I wanted to give you a few ideas for quick breakfast The first few are when you have maybe about five minutes to prepare something and sit down and eat it. At that time, you could look at having two scrambled eggs wrapped in a tortilla with salsa and a sprinkle of cheese, or a bowl of old-fashioned oatmeal topped with chopped nuts, raisins, and banana slices, or a whole wheat waffle toasted and topped with peanut butter and banana slices, Or one last example, a bowl of whole grain cereal topped with fresh fruit and the milk of your choice. Now, if you don't have time to sit, here are a few grab and go breakfast ideas. A fruit, um, a yogurt fruit smoothie, and you can actually make those in the calf during the breakfast service. Or a toasted bagel with peanut butter and an apple. Maybe a banana and a cup of hot chocolate made with milk. Or a yogurt parfait with layers of yogurt fruit and granola. Now, hopefully then you've had some breakfast and now you want it, you're looking at your midday meal. So really we want to be eating about every two to four hours. So the next one that we look at is lunch. And lunch is a pivotal meal. It refuels the energy that we've used up in the morning after our busy routines. 
and it then helps us to energize our bodies to focus in on afternoon classes, meetings, and athletic trainings. Here we want to focus in on foods that will help us with stamina and focus. And the first of this, or the cornerstone, is protein. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to load up on protein. Actually, you're just looking at three to four ounces if it's an animal source of protein, like a lean meats, poultry, or fish. That's about the size of a deck of cards. Plant sources, um, you can look at beans, tofu, quinoa. And, and then in addition to our protein, we also want to include some carbohydrates. And we're looking at really um, whole, whole grains or fiber-rich carbohydrates, such as um, vegetables, fruits, and whole grains. Uh, milk and yogurt are also good because they're a combination of carbohydrates and protein. Now, carbohydrates also will help us provide us energy. In addition, they help boost serotonin, which is a calming neurotransmitter. And this can help to diminish any, any um, irritability and help improve focus. Along with protein and carbohydrates, we want to include a little fat because this is going to help with the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins and promote satiety. So fat in our sauces, in our dressings, in our guacamole, that can help us, again, to help us feel full and provide some extra nutrients. And then in addition, having some fluid, some water either in their beverages or some high water content foods. Other tips in terms of lunch is to um, strive to, to look at your, at your plate and have a third of that be filled with protein a third be filled with vegetables and fruits, and another third with grains, and mostly whole grains. You also want to avoid a heavy meal because we don't want our, the blood to be diverted from the brain where we want to use it to help us think and process to the stomach for digestion. So really striving for an ample, moderate-sized meal. We also want to look at ways to minimize that mid-afternoon slump or that post-lunch lull. Now, studies have done, been done on the circadian rhythms over a 24-hour period, and they show that mood and alertness and energy levels are generally the lowest between 1 and 3 p.m. But here are a few tips for minimizing that, that post-lunch lull. First off is to eat breakfast. Second is to stay hydrated, having about half to one cup every two hours. Having that protein, three to four ounces, or again, the size of a deck of cards at lunch including some high fiber carbohydrates, such as whole grain breads, brown rice, bean soup, quinoa, striving for ample, not substantial servings at lunch, avoiding foods or beverages with a high sugar content, and then exercising at lunch. Maybe a, a pre-lunch walk or a post-lunch walk can help again just to keep the blood circulating. Now, sometimes we may not be able to fit our uh, go from breakfast to lunch or lunch to dinner in that two to four hour slot. We have to stretch it a little bit. And here's where snacking can come in handy, either mid-morning or mid-afternoon to top off our energy reserves, give us a little bit more nutrients, but stay within about 200 calories or so. Here are a few examples. Pretzels with peanut butter or hummus. Maybe two to four tablespoons of hummus with vegetables. A handful of nuts mixed with blueberries or dried fruit and, and a little bit of low-fat yogurt. Or a small bowl of plain oatmeal topped with fresh fruit and a splash of milk. Now, sometimes you may not be able to go to the calf or the airy or your apartment or the dorm to have a snack. So it's nice to be prepared. And here are a few things you may just want to have available in your backpack. Dried fruit, peanut or other nut butter packets granola bar, turkey jerky, oatmeal raisin cookie, or one ounce bags of peanuts or almonds. Now I focus primarily or entirely on food, but there are two other contributing factors to all day energy. One is adequate sleep. You really wanna to strive to get six to eight hours of sleep each night. The National Sleep Foundation actually found that two thirds of all workers in the US say sleepiness interferes with the amount of work they get done and nearly 20% say it causes them to make mistakes. The other important contributing factor is routine exercise. And this can be something that, again, that's just gonna get your heart going a little faster. 
get your blood circulating. Research at Middlesex University found that participants scored higher on a creativity test after engaging in 25 minutes of aerobic exercise. But you know, it doesn't mean you have to have 25 minutes, just even a 10 minute walk or using the stairs when you can is gonna to help to get that oxygen circulating and help in contributing, contributing to all day energy. Well, I hope you found these tips helpful. I really hope you'll enjoy the journey to good health and peak performance, both in the classroom and at life.